All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And in this video, I want to talk about the impact each Galactic Legend will have in your account. Now, disclaimer, these are my personal opinions. These are kind of the things that I've seen in other accounts, how I come across them in GAC and how I'm seeing them used in the game. So again, take everything with a grain of salt because my opinion with $2 will get your two or $3 can get you two McDoubles at, at McDonald's. So, you know, just, you know. That's even free advertising for them, so congratulations. Uh, anyway, let's first and foremost give a huge shout out to my channel members. Thank you guys so much for your continued support of this channel. If you guys want to be able to support this channel, link in the description down below. But the way to do that for free, right, subscribe. We're trying to hit 10,000. If we can hit 10,000 subscribers, I will be over the moon. We'll have a special live stream and everything. So thank you guys again so much. Let's get into this video and talk about the impact each Galactic Legend has. Now again, these are my own opinions, but... I think they kind of, you know, make sense. So the first one is Jabba, and he's kind of the gift that keeps on giving. That with that Smuggler's Run too, where it has that those mod rewards, territory battles, like he just constantly keeps giving and giving. Like he's very good in every single game mode. Conquest, territory battles, territory wars, everything, right? It just, like every single time you're like, man, I don't know if I could use this character more, he gives you an answer. Um, so I really do love Jabba. And the reason I rate mods so highly, I saw somebody ask this, and uh, I think it was Eric asked this. It was a really good question. He said, is, can I think of the assault battles as passive income the same way that you, like, could could the Smuggler's Run 2 be thought of the same way as passive rewards as uh, the assault battles? And I would not say that because, and this is why, mods are something that you can take from one character and put them on another character, right? That they are always, they can be moved around, they can be switched as they get better, right? And the reason I love to point this out is because I can't do that with gear. You know, that my, I, you know, I went, I went and relic Ugnaught for my guild, right? You know, as you guys can see, right? He better be a Leia wreck. But once my guild gets to that point where we don't need him for operations anymore because we have so much GP, like I can't take those relics off of him and go put them on somebody else. But the mods that I have on Jabba, as they increase, I can put them on somebody else. And so mods are something that, because they're this, like, movable piece of your inventory, right, they are worth so much more than just a couple extra Kyrotech here and there. Again, that's just my personal opinion, but I really think that that's why Jabba is the gift that keeps on giving, is you're just going to continually get better and better mods the longer that you're able to do that Smuggler's Run. And every single game mode he seemed, that they've brought out so far, he seems to do better and better in. Obviously, guys, our king is here. He's just making sure that you know that he is sitting on his lofty Relic 8 throne. All right, Jedi Master Luke. I view Jedi Master Luke as a stepping stone. He is, you know, if you're trying to cross a river or something, right, Jedi Master Luke is going to help you do that. He's probably one of the better Conquest Galactic Legends because he's not an attacker, similar to Jabba, right? That He's not an attacker. He's a tank, and so that gives you a lot of options. And honestly, you know, if you're trying to get some wins with people that you need to survive, you've got Wat Tambor, you throw the tank tech on Luke, and as long as you go up against a team that doesn't have AoEs, they get stuck behind Jedi Master Luke because he's got so much protection. So there's a lot of really good ways you can use him, but he's kind of that stepping stone. He can beat a lot of the Galactic Legends on offense. He's okay on defense. He definitely has some flaws. You know, Sith Eternal kind of makes food of him on defense, but... You know, I view him as a stepping stone, right? That he's going to let you get to better things. But the caveat here is that, you know, he there are areas where he's not quite as good. He needs a lot of help in territory battles, you know, with like Jedi Knight Luke and some of the other Jedi at times. Um, and that's kind of why I say he's a stepping stone, right? That he's going to get you to the point that you can climb that mountain to get, you know, like a Jabba where Jabba's kind of helping you climb that mountain. Master Luke is getting you to the mountain. You know, that's kind of, that's, that'd be a good way to say it. That's kind of why I call him a stepping stone. All right. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is a jack of all trades or he's like your Swiss army knife. Uh, he just beats so much stuff. He beats every galactic legend, right? Every galactic legend can be beaten with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, right? He's just, he is, he's really that good. Um, a great offensive weapon. Defensively, I think there's some holes in his, you know, defense that you can really exploit. Particularly, you know, the Jedi, Jedi Knight Luke can really still take him for a spin. Um, but offensively, guys, I mean, jack of all trades. The one area I'm not as big of a fan of is sometimes in Conquest, he can be a little bit harder to use depending on what team you're trying to run. But I mean, great for uh, so many different game modes. I mean, before this Great Dragon Raid, he was the king of raids. 
So, you know, they obviously had to, like, change the raid because of he was going to be able to beat everything, right? Um, so that's, you know, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren there. Next, we have Kenobi. So Kenobi is a milestone galactic legend. He's a galactic legend that, to me, is a milestone marker for your account. He's probably the only galactic legend that I think truly has no non-galactic legend counters. I think he's the only one that can claim that, I, you know, and I'll say like consistent because i think once in a while somebody can beat it with like a padme but you have kenobi you have commander tano like it's a milestone for your account it puts you at a level that you were not at before right opponents have to take you so much more seriously when you get him um the one area again like he does have a flaw right and that's i think pve particularly in territory battles i think he really can struggle especially if you don't have cat but i think even sometimes with commander tano kenobi's kit just kind of isn't well suited for um territory battles but that said in conquest he is amazing like all those nodes with the you know padme and general skywalker like the ones that just always steal your banners kenobi just makes that a joke because you go ahead you put that on commander tano she's gonna force leap whoever you need and then it's you know off to the races from there really love him again a milestone galactic legend you know that he's gonna allow you to have a lot more flexibility on offense and defense for both Territory Wars and GAC, but also the flexibility and conquest to be able to do some things that you weren't able to do before. So yeah, I really think he's like a milestone galactic legend for your account. That that's one that you really, really, you know, can kind of be proud of, right? All right, Sith Eternal to me is a back pocket galactic legend, right? He's a nice, like you ever hear somebody say like, it's a nice thing to have in your back pocket. That's the way I feel about Sith Eternal. You know, you're, he's not the first thing you're going to pull out when you have a problem. But it's like, oh man, you know what? I've got Sith Eternal still. I could use that to beat this team or this team. You know, against Galactic Legends, he's obviously got his flaws, right? He's definitely the weakest Galactic Legend in terms of trying to beat other ones. But what makes him so valuable is that against all the rest of the non-Galactic Legend teams, you throw him and Wat Tambor and it's a, you know, 65 banner win, right? Like he just is, he does have a lot of really good things that he can do in that light. Then you've got Lord Vader, and to me, he's a statement maker, right? That's a statement that you went and got the most expensive Galactic Legend. Yes, I understand that everybody loves to say, oh, well, Fennec beats him on defense, but come on now. With, you know, the amount of love he gets from Datacrons, let's be honest now, right? You know, that he's been getting so many holds for me in GAC, um, but he really, to me, he really is a statement, right? I mean, in PvE, this man shines. You throw, you, you press auto with him in PvE. That's just, it just is... The AI is normally not very good. I'll say particularly like in PVE game modes, they're not very good at trying to beat him and it just is awesome, right? You know, you just press auto. But to me, that's a statement, right? You know, the difference between him and Kenobi, I would say, right, is that you get Kenobi and it's like, like I said, it's a milestone, right? It's this great, great thing. With Lord Vader, it's more of a statement that you're like, yeah, you know what? I went and got four relicates. I went and did the most expensive thing in the game and here's what I have to show for it. And honestly, right now, it's proving more and more people wrong that Lord Vader's getting consistent holds in this game. Um, you know, I don't, and I think like that as they, you know, like Malakos is going to make this squad probably even better. And then finally, Ray, she's that GL that like, you guys will know exactly what comparison I'm making here, but uh, she's that GL that like you learn to live without. And then as soon as you get her, you're like, man, I didn't know what I was missing all along. Like she's so good. That's kind of how I see Ray. Right, that like you're gonna get her and you're gonna be like, wow, this is awesome. I really love Ray. So, yeah, guys, that's a quick impact on each Galactic Legend. Let me know what your thoughts are. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.